All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back for another Dota 2 Super League match. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here today by Luminous and currently watching the pregame show, wrapping up, getting ready to jump into the game just about any minute now. Lumi, it's LGD China with DD back on the roster versus a new and very revitalized Tong Fu. King J and Banana have joined their ranks. Banana playing support. A very versatile player in his own right. And King J to the three position. And frankly, Tong Fu, one of the scariest teams in China right now. Arguably, in some people's eyes, the second best team after IG in terms of their current form. And I think Lumi might not be with me just yet. Hola. Hello. <laughs> I I was waiting for you to give me the, the, the priority. There you but go. There's it never came. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, so it seems Zhao Zhi is, uh, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but Xiao Wei's girlfriend from the show, the dating show, is uh, actually casting the Dota. Yeah, I, they were kind of, uh, she actually knew pretty much about Dota. I was somewhat surprised. She plays Dota, obviously. And uh, during the kind of, I was listening to what she was saying, she says she's getting stomped by Chuan and, and Pups. So, okay, well... Who isn't getting stumped by Tom Exactly, Pops? so, you know, yeah. She's one of us now, so. Yeah. Uh, you, you figure she has the inside advantage, right? Playing with Xiao8 uh, and getting mm -hmm. uh, under his tutelage. You should learn the game pretty damn fast. But she was a Dota fan even before they started dating, as I understand it anyway. So, really cool to see her involved in the show. And, of course, 820 rocking a pretty nice hairstyle as well. I gotta say, uh, speaking of hairstyles, did you see Hal's latest do? No, I haven't. Oh my no, god. That is a monstrosity. That thing needs to be... I mean, Howe had like... He had like a really cute like Bieber kind of haircut going on. and Oh man. The horrible things he's done to his hair. I'm, I'm thinking I need a new hairstyle for... Uh, well, I don't have much hair to work with. But what do I do when I was looking at Howe? <laughs> looking at Howe and I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what I need. Just oh, slice man. it off in all the wrong places. Look um, at that. Look. <laughs> I I, I, love, I love how I'm not a fan the, uh, of this haircut though. I, I need to go on I need to go on Twitch right now, but uh Either way they are introducing Tong Fu. So I mean I, I suppose on a more relevant note, looking at this matchup, it's pretty interesting. You look at the storyline coming to this one and LGD China, they had a guaranteed spot at the International 2013. They chose to make a roster change after receiving their invite, and Tong Fu gets the nod. They get bumped into the qualified spot or the invited spot. LGD back down to the qualifiers. They felt they had to make this change. And from what Brax was saying on Much Ado About Dota, basically LGD, they don't care about just doing well at the International. For them, it's all about being able to win the event. And they just didn't feel they could do it with Long DD. So they've added DD back to the roster. They feel he's a more suitable choice for going deep into the event. They certainly went pretty far with him last year. And, well, now they got to get there, Lou, man. If you're Tang Fu on the other side, you got to be thinking, there's got to be a part of them that say, we want to prove that we deserve that spot. And I'm sure that's somewhere in the minds, if not of the players, then certainly for a lot of the fans. Is Tang Fu deserving of that spot? Well, for me, is, is LG good enough to make it out of the Eastern Qualifier? Because that too. so far they look like they're not good enough to make it out. Uh, they, they had a couple of matches again against Vichy Gaming. Uh, that's kind of the big one to, to prove, or not prove, but... but Maybe shake the uh, confidence of themselves, maybe as well as their fans. Tong Fu on the other side, three old Zenith on the uh, other day when I cast with Gods for the AMD Premier League, and they look completely legit as a top four finisher of TI3. That's that's if, saying a lot. If they play like that, when it counts, absolutely. And this is a team that I feel has really benefited from their roster changes, especially adding a player like King J. That brings a lot to the table. Tang Fu, they kind of, I never felt like they had really that stable presence as sort of their three position. And they not only get that, they get a player that can make plays from that role and big plays of that. King J, obviously known for being a very consistent performer on land for a long time. Back, I mean, be, even before the E-Home days in some ways. He's, this guy's been around for a long time. And I'm excited to see what he brings to the table here today. He'll be in the captain's chair. He'll be drafting. And speaking of which, Lumi... It's time to get ourselves inside the game. Game one, now about to be underway. So we're going to roll the intro, guys, when we come back. Game one will be coming. We 
are back and we're live and that's not the right overlay, but now we're set. LGD China versus Tang Fu, a battle of two teams who have received invites to the International 2013 within the past, not even month, but we really within the past few weeks or so, LGD China lost theirs when they chose to make a roster change. Tang Fu, the ones who got the nod, and now it's going to be a battle of two Chinese titans, not quite at that level of perfection that we saw from Invictus Gaming earlier today, but two teams that are looking to find their stride. For Tang Fu, it's about proving themselves and getting off to a good start in their first match for the Dota 2 Super League. As for LGD China, well, it's a little more straightforward for them. It's all about getting ready for the International 2013 Eastern Qualifiers scheduled to kick off, and I think it's around 36 hours, maybe a little bit longer than that. I'm LDA Beyond the Summit. I'm joined here today by Luminous, and we're going to cast some good old-fashioned Chinese Dota. I'm digging Tong Fu's tags right now. I mean, they are repping their sponsors. You can see, you, can you, you translate see? these? It's, it's, it's something, something Tong Fu. Tong Fu is something, something. Uh, I don't <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Louis. No problem. No problem. I, I always love the team when, you know, they had, I think Dara was, was the team first to do it. It's so smexy to see them, you know, to, to give uh, their sponsor a little bit of love, you know, represent their team. Yeah, I, you can't argue with that. Zhao Zhi, yep. of course, is in the casting booth, so you know she'll be shamelessly rooting for Xiao Wei during this broadcast if you're watching the Chinese stream, which if you speak Chinese, you really should because 820 is casting. That's always a treat. But uh, as for us over on the English casting side of things, we're going to see what Tang Fu have up their sleeves this game. Lumi, you cast them playing versus Zenith, and you mentioned in our quick pregame chat, they 3 0 Zenith. Talk to me more about how were they picking, what was their style versus Zenith, and do you think we're going to see a similar thing here today? For for me, when they won, they didn't do anything flashy. It wasn't from a wisp pick. It wasn't from any kind of crazy strategy where, you know, you do alchemist, which may be a little bit untraditional, or you do kind of big push strat. They just play a solid standard game, and they don't make any mistake. Um, very traditional of a you know like an older Chinese team, a very uh, methodical you know uh, push down towers and then they go roche and then I win team fights, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't you don't make any type of big plays. Kind of the MVP player slash hero for me is Mu. He's really good with the clockwork. I see him in one game was like 11-0 and 2 or something like that. On top of the initiation, it was always against the Magnus as well. Uh, you kind of mentioned it earlier with the IG versus Vichy Gaming, how good clockworks always find that Magnus and prevent that Blink Dagger initiation. And Mu is completely on top of that. So if LGD Gaming don't pick up clock here, which I don't expect them to, Look towards Tong Fu picking up a clock very early. It's one of their best heroes, and Mu play it beautifully. And you can pick that hero, and it still leaves your options wide open as far as how you want to approach the game. It just gives you such a disruptive hero in the fights, like you mentioned. LGD China will go for the Nyx Assassin first pick. There's also a mag in the pool. If they go for the clock mid, then I don't think we'll see the mag. He's just not a strong or suitable offlaner nowadays, and... Uh, just Skewer not really being that effective since the nerfs, but what will they go for? The options are wide open. King J's been playing a lot of Weaver as of late. I imagine more as a situational response to Lifestealer, but we, we'll we see. I think this Tongfu team, you mentioned they're not super flashy or crazy with their draft, but they're a versatile team. Having players like King J and Banana, they can really take this a number of directions. Oh, how did I forget? There's a Bat Rider in the pool, and what do you know? Tongfu will snap that up as well as the Mag, and I gotta say... Sure, LGD get Nyx, but I am never comfortable with the team giving away Batrider. Yeah, Batrider just allows you to kind of angle your offense so much. Uh, I'm just thinking about defending your tier 2s, for example, 25 minutes in the game, and there's a Batrider coming out of forest on one of those side lanes. You just don't know where he is going to come from, especially with a Blink Dagger and Forest App on top of that. But LD, I gotta ask you, should I change my compendium here a little bit? I'm, I'm so far putting... In the Eastern Qualifier, that Batrider will be the most banned hero, but so far in the three games that were casted so far, there hasn't been a bat ban. It's in fact been Life Sealer and Gyrocopter and Shadow Demon. Yeah. What do you think? Is it bad still the safe kind of auto ban, you know, or the most banned hero? I mean, for me, it's the Magnus, it's the Batrider, and it's the Lifestealer. And then maybe right below those, the Lone Druid is the heroes you're most likely to see getting banned out consistently by the Asian team. Sometimes they'll ban other heroes like we see here, uh, the Gyrocopter, the Shadow Demon. But those three and maybe the Lone Druid are my four candidates. And out of those, I would say... Bat's just the most versatile. He's the one that can go jungle really efficiently. He doesn't need a whole lot of farm. He can lane and dominate his lane. Mag pretty much demands solo mid. Sure, he's amazing at it. 
uh, as far as those melee <laughs> ridiculous team fight heroes go, but he does still demand it. The bat open is just so damn versatile, and it's never really a weak start. So I think he'll be the most banned, but if he's not, he'll definitely be the most picked. So I'd say put him as one or the other, Lumi. But either way, LGD China, you mentioned Safe and Stable, the name of the game for Tangfu. Well, talk about Safe and Stable. Seconds, They'll pick up the anti-mage for Silar. They'll also maybe deny that to Hao, and uh, what is Hao going to play in this game? I'm sort of curious to see. Yeah, I think I've seen how play Alchemist. I'm not sure if I were remembering it incorrectly. No, that's Rising Stars uh, pick up against Tom Fu. All these uh, kind of Asian games been starting to mixing together. Yeah, I do wonder what he's going to play, but uh, I, we'll have to wait and see. I think Dragonite was one of those uh, carry here that he was playing, and we might actually see it because Dragonite in power plus Magnus, pretty nice kind of damage silencer. output in the early game, but it's going to be a silencer. So we see more and more of a resurgence of this hero. And much to your disdain, it's going to be a support one. Well, Chuan made it work last game, but I feel... Well, Chuan was carrying with for that me, For me, that's more that IG make everything work, as opposed to the silencer really being a strong support pick. He can be. He can be, definitely, but I just don't feel he brings that much to the laning stage, and that's really where most of our Asian games are won nowadays. I mean, I, not just Asian games, Dota games in general, but I would say especially in the Eastern scene, there's so much emphasis on those early first few minutes in the lanes from your movement, your warding game, uh, and of fighting those early kills. And Silencer, let's be honest, not the best killing support, not the most survivable or defensive support either. He's obviously great if you can get to level 6, and he's obviously fantastic at killing anti-mage once he has global silence. We saw that earlier today for sure. That uh, Zona Sub J just kept on getting picked off. So potentially that global silence could have the same impact here. And I do feel like it gives them another, a nice additional way to deal with this anti-mage. But with that being said, you look at Tang Fu's lineup now and not really that... Well, they're decent in the laning stage, but I think more what I'm trying to say is very level dependent. Batrider, Mag, Silencer, they don't bring much to the team uh -huh. until they hit six. Yeah, but they're going to find six rather easily, I imagine, because That's I mean, true. how are you going to shut down Magnus? And, they pick, and LGD picks a Nyx and an Anti-Mage, which are not exactly the most aggressive. Exactly. So, I mean, going back to the Silencer real fast, if you really think about Silencer as a support and shutting down Anti-Mage compared to other supports, what other support really give you one of the most reliable way to kill Anti-Mage? Shadow Demon, for example, doesn't do it. I guess Telekinesis Lift sort of does it, but he generally survived through that and blink away. But signs will give you kind of like, for sure, we're killing AM. We're going to play a Skullbo, we're going to lead with a Sun, a couple more right clicks, and he generally don't survive, especially when you have the pure damage output of Glaives, when you have a last word on top. It's a very reliable way to kill the Anti-Mage, and I mean, we've seen it twice so far as an Anti-Mage counterpick. It's, you get, you know, kind of added benefit of teamfight uh, being won or a great initiation tool in a late game. I don't think it's really that bad of a pick, even as a support. Um, I, I guess that being won more and more, as we saw IG Chuan playing it earlier. Tong Fu won one of their games with the Silencer against Zenith in the AMD Premier League Grand Final. So we'll see how they're going to do here today. Let's see how it pans out. I'll definitely, I'm happy to eat my words if Tong Fu makes it work in this game. But uh, I mean, you look at what LGD have, and they have a lot of heroes that can also prey on that Silencer. Nix sure, Assassin. Yeah. Anti-Mage. If they catch Silencer out, well, that's a delicious little snack for either of them, and it's going to be a puck. I was actually starting to wonder if Tom maybe Fu's we'd see something like a support pick. Rubik and a Solomon Nyx, but LGD, they'll go for the puck here. They'll send him most likely to the middle lane, and then I guess the question's going to be, what are they going to do for that off lane? There's no Darkseer available. I don't know what they could run as a jungler, but they don't really have... Nature's Prophet. Yeah, they can't really aggressive try lane. You look at this draft, and that sets your anti-mage up to be 1v1 versus a bat rider, and that's not a matchup you want to give him. So has to be a defensive try lane, I feel, from LGD China, and that means puck mid, and then, like you said, something like a Nature's Prophet maybe as the jungler. Well, speaking of aggressive try lane, there is going to be one featuring a Silencer and Visage. Uh, or Visage. I think that's the wrong pronunciation. I, I, think I think it's Visage. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, Gods was giving me like multiple <laughs> options of pronunciation, and Visage, he it's, said, is it's, not it's, one of them. Oh well. well let me give you another mean. option. It's pronunciation, not pronunciation. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> While I, we're on the subject, how the two white Davids will correct the Asian Davids' we're pronunciation. We're pressing you. Or, what was it? We're pressing pronunciation you. or pre what? Pronunciation. Pronunciation. All right. We're oppressing and, you, Lumi. Okay, it's okay. It's the Asian I, I've man's been... burden. <laughs> Let's not go there. Neither, There's too, much, too many years of slavery I have to deal with. 
All right. Well, anyway, let's not get too on PC here on the cast. But LGD China looking for that last pick now. And imagine it's a support Nick, support Lashrak. They need that jungler or that offlaner. But looking at what Tongfu have, I feel like Tongfu really wants to take this as an aggressive tri lane. And what's that carry going to be? There's no gyro in the pool. There's no juggernaut. I mean, these are some of the heroes I would look at and say maybe that's what they want. But what do you think? Tongfu, it, it screams aggressive tri lane with Batrider, Safe Lane, and Magnus Mid. What's your carry pick if you're Tongfu? Ten Fu? seconds remaining. I mean... Or is it even a farming Visage? Some other teams have run it lately. Five seconds uh, remaining. Always makes me think of Dignitas's, uh, whatchamacallit, the... Tongfu's turn uh, to pick. Aoi on the Visage, and, or Visage. Goddamn. Visage. Visage. <laughs> just visage. Say, just call, that's it the, the right call it the V-Bird. The V-Bird? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna call it that from now on, because you can't pre mispronounce that one. But in any case... Uh, Sankey is going to be the final pickup here, so is this some sort of offlane? It's, it's an offlane flash. puck, it looks like. Solo mid Nyx, I imagine. No, that's... You can't, you can't offlane a puck. No. Against Bat? I don't... I, I, I agree, I don't think it's a good matchup for the puck, but what else are they going to do? Five you can't really leave Anti-Mage alone against Bat Rider, and I imagine Tongfu would be quite happy to put Bat offlane Magma to run a defensive exactly. trial if LGD want to take the fight to them. So it could come down to mind games here for... I think for LGD, they definitely want to dodge this Tongfu tri lane, uh, or at least if they're going to fight it, be in the defensive position when they're up against How it. about a 1v1 Nyx Assassin versus the Bat? Oh my <laughs> goodness. What in the actual hell? So I take back everything I say about Tongfu not being a splashy team that will surprise you with the picks. Boom. Because we just got a Spectre fifth pick from Tom Fu. The reach of this team is actually insane. With the with the birds, the familiars to scout all over the map, global silence, global uh haunt from Spectre, then you have Blink, Flame Break from Batrider mid game, Magnus with Blink Skewer. They can jump on you from around the world, basically. What is the mindset behind this pick? That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out because yeah, what are the lanes? This is this looks like a defensive tri lane, a jungle bat, and a solo mid mag. Right, you have V-Bird, one of the best aggressive prowling hero. <laughs> there you go, I saved and you. Then, and then you have Spectre, which is not exactly an aggressive trialing machine. Ten seconds, really so where do you actually go from here? And we kind of talked about how, you know, Five Silencer is not exactly your best roaming ganker. Same thing with Visage, he's, he's not that either, so... It, it's gonna be that solo mid Lashrak. You, you, you thought maybe a, a farming Lashrak, Lumi, it's gonna be one, Prepare shall we? Gonna battle. be playing that, or maybe not solo mid, but definitely a farming Lashrak. He actually looks like he, he's gonna take the tri lane. Silar, are they really gonna leave him bottom by himself? It looks like... What's going on here? LGD trying to figure out their lanes while they do that. Let's introduce the players. It's a Congo line down to the bottom lane for LGD China. This is a big game for them. They're getting ready for the International 2013 East Qualifiers. Those start in about 36 to 40 hours. Shall we? On the Latrax, Silar in the Anti-Mage. Uh, handling the Anti-Mage. No surprises there. Yao going to be playing the Puck. DD on the Sand King. Last but not least, DDC. The boys are back. The, the support brothers linked together at the hip. Gonna be handling the Knicks. I just want to say this is the 2011 international lineup for LGD. So, like, they got they got pretty much a big legacy, and yep. they got a little ton of experience. It's 2012, but yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. And, and as soon as you know, they they brush brush off the rust. You know, they they should be able, in theory, to kind of just throw through everybody in the East qualifier. But you know, that's that's here and there. But let's all go to uh, Tong Fu's lineup here. We're gonna have how. Uh, sporting uh, Spectre and some, you know, bad haircut, as LD put it. We have Banana pl playing the Silencer. We have Shan Shan going to be on the V-Bird. Uh, looks like Mu is going to be soloing in mid with Magnus. And we're going to have King J on that offlane Batrider. I think they were hoping that King J would start Don't in the jungle. Dodge. They're leaving Siler alone. Actually, he's got a magic stick. So, well, I haven't seen an anti-mage lane against a Batrider before. He is starting with a bit of pulled regen, but... I can't imagine this is going to go too well for Siler. We'll see how it develops. I don't think he'll die, but he may struggle a bit in terms of farm. Anyway, Lumi, with that being said, you mentioned, well, LGD should be able to kind of roll their way through everyone, and you look at what this roster did at the International 2012. You have to agree on paper with what you said. They went undefeated all the way yep. up until the winner bracket finals on the main stage where Na'Vi managed to pull a fast one on them and kind mm -hmm. of rip the rogue out from under them. And then they sort of self-destructed I, uh, just compared to how they had done up to that point. But, I mean, they still did well, obviously, with a third-place finish, but it felt like they were rattled and never recovered. The question is, well, is this the same Tongfu as that international? I would have to say, hell no. Not with KJ, as well as Banana. With that being said, though, the lanes are now underway, and uh, how do you feel about the matchups? 
Yeah, it looks a little bit awkward. We saw Curse of the Silence here from Banana. Not a spell that I'm a big fan of. And level 1 Curse burned 70 mana for himself. He dropped on 2 2 heroes. Those 2 heroes kind of like lulled and didn't cast anything, and Curse went away in like a second. So, this is a spell that gets a lot better once you do level it up. But this is a trialing versus trialing situation. You're supposed to get your big nukes, you're supposed to get your last word. And, well, so far, nothing is really happening. And if you're how, you're happy about that. By the way, Silar is struggling quite a bit in terms of CS. This is a 7 to 1 Batrider already, Silar. Not doing too hot, but the creep wave is Mid lane. Pushing. Meanwhile, Mid lane Moo, is he gonna give away first blood? He will give away first blood to Yao. I just kind of wax poetic about how Moo is really good in mid lane, and Yao suddenly just grabs a verse of a Shrek top lane, on the top lane. Huge action, Burrow strike, or sorry, excuse me, Impale, and then Burrow catches two with both. That's one down. This might be more. Are they going to chase for how? No, they'll go on Sign Chain. Is there an Impale? There is. Mana's there, just needs the range. There's no follow up Burrow strike. Will they throw it out anyway? They need a body block. They're going to get it from DD. Sign Chain's still in the run. He's accruing quite a bit of Soul Assumption charges, but doesn't have the mana to, to send one out. DDC going to back off in the end. So, they strike first mid, they get another kill top, and it's a pretty dangerous try lane. LGD have three AoE stuns. That is very hard for a Spectre to deal with. Yeah, I, again, I have no clue what the Spectre is about. So far, it's not doing so well. Uh, and Yao back in the mid lane, gonna take a ton of harass, move right back in his grill. But getting that first blood mid, uh, as always, if you get a 1v1 mid first blood, it is such a swing on that matchup. And it's gonna be tough here for Mu to make any type of comeback. Puck already have boots and bottle. And uh, he could even go for some sort of a Tret upgrade, which is going to give him a, a ton of mid-game superiority and allows him to gank all over the map, which is something I would expect. Or he could get a little bit greedy and go for the complete Blink Dagger rush. I mean, to be honest, that really shouldn't happen where Magnus dies that early to Puck. Obviously, not to take anything away from Yao, but it seems like Mu maybe got a little cocky or overextended there. You should be able to just sit back and like, spam Shockwave on the ways, but Mu's actually going to man up now. Yao will has secured that Invis room. We'll pop it now, comes right back out, and... For LGD, they're not getting farm on their anti-mage, but that's A-OK. -okay. If your tri going to dominate like this, it's totally worth the trade. And, well, nobody expected the Spectre as that final piece to the puzzle. And once that pick comes out, what looked like a very strong potential tri for Tongfu and an aggressive tri -lane, it got a lot weaker, and LGD's been able to punish it so far in the laning stage. Well, we're going to see Tongfu try to make some type of recovery by pulling this neutral camps, but Puck gets... What? Again. Sorry I missed that one, guys. Yeah, with another kill. Should have caught it, but Moo dies yet again. Already 0-2 in the lane. We're only four minutes in. Boy, he's really struggling here, and this is trouble for them because you look at their draft. Magnus is the only hero who can really help them take the fights early, aside from that King J Batrider. And I top mean, lane. Top lane, they're going to go in again. They catch out Sangshade. That's two stuns in a row. Now Sangshade on the run. He's going to drop. Will they get more? They're thinking about Banana. Too low on Mana to go forward, but they're finding kills all over the place. LGD China just kind of running ramp, uh, roughshod over Tang Fu, and the runes being controlled thoroughly by Yao. Tang Fu can't help this Magnus mid control them, which makes it even harder for him. And now Yao, he's level 6, so if he wants to join this tri lane or potentially help Silar out bottom lane. Either he can do. He's level 6, and about 4 minutes in is when he hits it. That's ridiculous. That is that is kind of insane, if you kind of think about it. Now with this haste rate, I imagine Mu is actually going to go down one more time. Dream Call is now available. Nice fuck. Uh, did I say what I should have said? Nice puck face shift. <laughs> A little bit of Freudian slip myself there. I apologize. And uh, again, I'm not sure what the Spectre Trilane is designed to do. But farming, I guess, is not really it because she's only got 18 CS. Yeah, we'll pop that haster, and is he going to rotate? For the moment, I imagine he'll just look to push the creep wave in, prevent Moo from doing a whole lot. We'll manage to dodge a shockwave through the haste, not through the phase shift. And the good news is Silar's not actually struggling that much. He got a set of cool tangos. He's not farming well, but he's getting levels. He's getting the basic nice items up, that. and it's not like Spectre's farming that well either. So all things considered, you got to call this just a huge advantage for LGD China through the laning stage. I guess the good news is Bat's having a powerful start. King J, if he keeps this up, should have a pretty fast Blink Dagger. And that means, I mean, not super fast by any means, but a decently fast, and that means he may be able to help salvage this tri lane. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have to set up some very key ganks, uh, but imagine you're not going to find too many successful ganks on Anti-Mage. Puck is almost ungankable, so really, you could only pick apart the tri lanes. Top lane, Top lane. Edict burning away on the Dying tower. thought they were going to make a golden banana, fortified. but they don't just yet. Well, at the very least, they got forced out Glyph, so the next time they, for example, pick off a hero, they could really do a ton of damage, if not, you know, push down the tower altogether. So, 
Spectre has that Portman Shield from early, has that early Magic Stick, which is a smart pickup against a kind of a spell-dependent trialing like this, and early boots of speed. They're looking to kind of stay alive and making sure that they could... This is one of the kind of lower killing uh, trialing versus trialing, if you kind of look about it, despite, you know, the score being 4-1. and one. Two of those came on the mid lane, so it's not that bad for Tongfu up top. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the graphs, and it's actually not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Yao's gotten two kills mid and is level 8, yet... In spite of that fact, uh, as well as the fact that Anti-Mage is getting levels and LGD is dominating top in terms of kills, Tongfu's keeping up with the pulls. They managed to hit level 3 on their, their Silencer as well as their Visage. And how is isn't dying? That's really the key. Sure, he's not farming a lot, but he's got one assist to his name. He hasn't died. And for Spectre, that's always the biggest thing. Stay alive, get your levels, because this hero does quite a bit. Uh, sure, normally we're all used to seeing the Radiant Spectre, but nowadays you can go for things like Phase Drums. I know that's something AUI 2000 is a big fan of, even the early Diffusal Blade. And this hero packs quite a mid-game punch, especially with the buffs that have been made over the past few patches to Dispersion. Or so right now, Desolate, I mean. we don't see too much action. I think it's a good time to kind of talk about Spectre's skill build, because uh, maybe we're going to see a pink going on top lane here, impale into a splitter. And Pearl Strike not going to fall. Through. He's worried about a teleport right now. Batrider's off the map, so he won't go in, and wisely so at that. More action, but no kill. Now they'll go Bur in. Pearl Strike catches two. They decide now's the time. Changing Jeez. up the stuns a little bit, but look at the AoE. Hal's going to man up. He does take a modern bird. He drops low. There's your eating damage. Not dead yet, but he might go down. He'll get burrowed through again. Oh my goodness, this is Stun City. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Siler's on the run. Lasso has been used, and King J. Little surprised he didn't rotate to the tri lane because realistically you're just not going to kill an anti-mage at full HP. He blows his lasso, he gets nothing there. I kind of got to question that one. I think either you sit on the lasso or you teleport top and try to make something happen there. Also the fact that he went for that kill without flame break, which is completely standard to have by this point. I'm not sure exactly what the mindset to not have flame break back on the top lane here. Looks like Moose gonna be surrounded from both sides. A waning rift should be really good. Nice waning rift. Orb is gonna cut itself through and I'm not sure RP was dropped. It wasn't. That's gonna be a kill. Khan also was used or wasted, depending on how you look at it, and that didn't accomplish anything. 72 so far, and LG, oh, spirit of up top, Burrow Strike should be able to follow through. There's no Burrow Strike necessary, because Sanki wasn't there. They are going to get a return kill on Xiao A Spectre. Nice Spectre Dagger with the KS, but, uh, man, they got to stem the bleeding a little bit, at least in this early game, because they are losing a ton of kills. The good news is the Blink Dagger is coming soon for King J. It's going to be looking like a 10-minute Blink. It is a bit rushed. He's only got the boots and a bottle, but in spite of that, it's a really fast blink, and with this, I feel you have Haunt. Spectre can help you find kills whenever his ult's off cooldown. You can use Global Silence once you get it for the same sort of thing. Even RP, you can use it for solo kills. So LGD, they've had a really powerful start. Puck's off to a good start. They already have level 6 on their Nyx Assassin, and, I would, and if they keep this rolling, they're going to be in great shape. But if Tongfu puts some good lane wards down, maybe a sentry here or there when they can afford them, which I guess that's the issue is they really can't. I think they could be in okay shape, but they're going to need some great anticipation over the next minute or so, and here comes DDC. Smoked up and Vendetta available. Well, let's see if they're going to be utilizing Vendetta as kind of a uh, initiation tool. Sentry Ward's going to get dropped to scout out possible other enemy sentries. He is going to Vendetta away and try perhaps at a backstab. I guess Banana is the easiest target to kill, because uh, Shenzhen does have that... Uh, point into Gravekeeper Cloak will give him Radiant more magical uh, resistance as well as armor. They're kind of closing in. There's there's a bat blink, but he isn't here yet. He's going to buy it now. King J has to sell some branches to get that TP scroll. You have to realize that they're top at this point. There's been so many heroes off the map. They're going to use Edict to bring the tower down. How is still here. He's trying to defend this one. Are they going to bring in their Magnus? Moo has a TP. It looks like they want to contest. Where's that teleport from Batrider? He walks top. Now he heads back towards mid. Now he heads top again. And in comes the TP. And if you're LGD, you just back the hell up. That's a bat with a blink. He will jump in. Doesn't find Yao. Spectre will deploy. That's a good to blow him up immediately off the bat. Bro Strike coming through, catches two. Sang Chen trying to find what he can. Mu walking in, strutting in for an RP. Skewers forward, doesn't have mana, pops the stick charges. Now he does. Now DDC on the run. It seems like despite losing the bat, Tung Fu's gaining the upper hand. DDC's isolated. Can they pick him off? He's going to be looking for a two hero stun. He'll only catch one. He'll salve up through it. Mu looking for a shockwave. Cooling down. It looks like DDC is going to fall next. Can they bring him down? One more hit. Yes, they can. Now Banana. The trade is here. Yao going to find a return kill, but may pay with his own life. That's a big death if he does because he's farming his blink. He's close. He won't die just yet. So when it's all said and done, call it a pretty even fight. I would say, if anything, 
I, I might even favor Tong Fu just because they're getting desperately need experience, but it's not done yet. Ooh. Throw through again. Epicenter for Hao. Gonna drop. Brought down fast now. Yao chasing for more. No extra spells. Can't bring down Sang Che, but now a good fight for LGD China for sure, and they're gonna get the tier one. Yeah, I would have called it a beautiful fight for Tong Fu, but not how it ended. Spectre's gonna go down, and a Glyph is gonna come out as well. And uh, I was saying, you know, RP not being used, and Magnus didn't die throughout that. That's kind of what you want from your Magnus. That didn't have the most beautiful start. He is gonna get Arcane Boots. Generally, you see Magnus have Arcane Boots and maybe 1500 go around this point of game. He just got it up, so he's very behind schedule. And throughout all of that team fight, he came on that Silar wasn't harassed at all. He was kind of getting free and malicious farm on the bot lane. Right. And this, is, this is for Protect 1 and a kind of an unusual variant where it's a very aggressive movement around the map from the other four, but that's creating space for Silar. Got free farm and the big news is Yao has a blink. 12 minutes in to have a big blink on your puck is just insanely fast. Getting first blood, he's 5-0 and 1. This is Jeez. this is about as hard as you could possibly snowball on a puck and he did it against the solo mid Magnus. Just basically outplaying Mu, who you mentioned has been playing great in his own right as of late, was dominating Zenith all day long. They 3 0'd them in the AMD Premier League, and it's it's completely the other direction this time. Yao's normally not that aggressive of a solo mid, at least not in my experience. He's much more of a slowly accumulate advantage kind of mid, but this is a, a snowball hard. Reminds you a bit of a player like Korok in terms of the way his game's developing. And now they're going to go on mid. The blink is here. Are they going to jump in and look for Mu? Not just yet, but the blink's available. Working away on the tower, Edict's cooling down. They could bring it low soon. Moo, if he tries to go in, there's just no way he's going to get an RP off, I feel. Maybe now, Ooh. yeah, we'll blink DDC? away. DDC? DDC on the back line here. Not Vendetta up. He de uh, he's Vendetta's out. Oh. Global as well as Han comes in. They really want DDC and a Flaming Lasso. They bring him dead. I wonder if actually that's going to stop the push. So far, LG's not backing off just yet. They're still in RP. That's the one thing that Tang Fu still have going their way. That was the first Global Silence fight to kill. Xiaowei's coming in. Confident to work on this tower, which is at 130, HP, 130 HP, exactly a 10%, and they're going to deny it right nice. now. Nice. I hear Puck not going to come in here for the kind of last-minute heroic. And yeah, pretty good defense here. A ton of uh, big cooldown ultimates being used, but they got the kill. So really want to talk about Spectre skill build before we kind of any more ashing comes up. Max Dagger first, which kind of traditional is traditionally is a skill build to go for, but lately we've seen Western teams, to, when they use Spectre, for example, Alliance, when they use it, you max Desolate plus 7. That's 65 pair damage, and in that earlier jungle fight when he was chasing the Nyx Assassin, that Nyx Assassin would have died in two hits if he had max Desolate. So just to show that Spectre, at least in the Chinese scene, not really catching up. If you look at how Spectral Dagger scales, it's one of the worst scaling spell in the entire game. Completely surprised to see Max, and maybe to show that they're not really knowing how this hero uh, truly works. Well, um, to, to be fair, you're not likely to be go manning up against the tri lane that else. I mean, as as a as a free KS tool with Haunt, I still believe that you, I mean uh, that you do finally use that throughout the game. It just gives you more damage output. I think just the way the tri lane went, they didn't really want the Spectre to go in. So I definitely agree with you. It's much. You're not going to do nearly as much damage in the fights with this build, but it's kind of your safer build and. You can work heroes down from long range. You don't have to commit your hero to do extra damage. Frankly, you go in to Burrow Strike into Edict, you just melt. We've seen him melt this game repeatedly, but uh, tabling that discussion for the moment. LGD looking to push bottom lane. They've almost got a battle fear in Silar. He's very close if he gets this tower or a kill will have it. DDC on the back line. Gonna find King J, spot him out, brings him low, and now Silar not even needed to get that kill. That's a bad way to start the fight if you're Tong Fu. Yao jumps in, catches out Mu. Coil has already been dropped. Moose caught. RP's gonna Ooh. airball. Completely whiz that one. Great play by LGD to dodge it. Now DDC on the run. Yao too. Everybody backing off. How coming in. Can he find some kills? This is his time if he's going to. But nobody dropping yet. In fact, look at the damage. The physical and nuke damage this team can bring to bear. Silar. Man mode against Banana. Just looking squishy right now. Sanctuary next in line. They will find a kill. But Yao is just cleaning up on the back lines. He finds Banana. Ultra kill for him. Absolutely out of his mind. Can we call it a rampage? He wants it. Give him the rampage, Silar. He won't do it. Oh, man. This ain't looking good right now. There will be a last one. Yeah, this could end the streak in a big, big way. Nice chain stun for the familiars. Phase shifts. Can't get out. That's 700 <laughs> gold in the bank of King J. Something he desperately needed. But... No. In the bank of the Beaver. Oh, excuse me. 
chaos with the birds himself. Familiar doing some big stunning and then into right click. I'm sure he uh, will get his arcane boots after that at the very least. So hey, it's not bad. Here's the problem: Silar has a 16 minute battle fury, and he lane against a bat rider solo. That's not why you run the bat rider in that bottom lane. No, this puck is completely snowballing out of control. I've never really seen a kind of disheart of a snowball. Uh, when two Chinese teams go against each other, because they're really good at kind of uh, stem the bleeding, they're really good at kind of shutting down that one person that goes from afar. And this is really kind of being a big problem. Your Magnus doesn't have the blink dagger, and you can see that how he's easily being shut down. That that RP was embarrassing in that bot lane. Blink, blink raining rift, as well as a, a kind of a couple of puck spells baiting him out early. There's and, just uh, there's not much he can do against the puck yeah. blink dagger. He sure it looked really bad, but. How are you going to actually find a good RP when there's so many stuns on LGD, there's the blink silence, and there's coil, there's just so many ways to disrupt that combo. I, I, I think it looked really bad. I don't think he could have hit a good one unless LGD completely failed the fight, to be totally honest. And the other reason is, well, there's Batrider can go in first, but he died at the beginning of that fight, so it had to be the mag who started. As a result, he, he's not equipped to do it. Until he gets his blink, it's got to be King J who starts the fights, and getting caught out by that Nyx assassin really prevented him from doing so. So now we look at a 6,000 gold lead for LGD China, a 4,000, almost 5,000 experience lead for them, and they're going to get free farm all over the map for Silar. And Libby, here's my question. How do you gank Silar right now? Because I don't see the Spectre out farming him going phase, drums, and now Defusal Blade. Well, they wanted to use a smoke. Unfortunately, they ran past a Sentry Ward and the Creep Wave started attacking them, so that is out of plan as well. The rest of the team is still smoked up. I don't I don't think actually the Radiant knows, so if you get a notice. Blink Lasso. Yeah, if you get a Blink Lasso and a Global, so that's how you get the gank. And look at that perk. Oh! They've stacked the Lasso with the Global. Not really the best coordination, but they're still going to be chased. Flame Break nicely placed. Silar is going to drop in spite of it. Now. In comes Moo, Epicenter available, RP will be there, but the MP comes off, everybody from Tang Fu runs into it, takes a lot of damage, not dead yet, Coil's gonna connect, catches out everyone, the backstab is here, the backstreet boys are here as well, King J to fall, that's three dead, including your Spectre, just for an anti-mage and a Sand King, doesn't feel like it's worth it, Global was thrown out as well, and the lasso, everything to get those kills. Sure, you get the anti-mage, but he's still gonna win in terms of trades, because he is gonna farm a lot faster than the Spectre. Yeah, Tofu has a complete right mindset in terms of how to make the comeback. It's just that it, they're very, very unlucky because the heroes that they have lost multiple times is the Spectre. Spectre, one of the more unique carries out there that don't need too much farm early on to contribute to fight and as well as chaos in those fights. Again, correct mindset to kind of hunt in, get a couple of freebies, especially when you have Global and Magnus RP backup. You expect to kind of win a fight somewhat lopsidedly, but the kind of the, the, the monkey wrench in the plan is there's, there's this damn fat, fat puck. He's just really everywhere, like doing a ton of damage. He's kind of ultimate orb. It's working towards a Scythe advice. If he gets a Scythe like 30 minutes in, I don't know, man. This, this, is, is, a... this is just going to ruin Mu. I, Mu yeah. is going to have a blink soon, but a puck who has a Scythe advice, I, I mean, again, it's just it's another way to say good luck getting that RP off. It's already hard with the blink silence. It gets so much harder. Mu's going to need a BKB this game, Lumi, to have any kind of reliable chance at getting off a good reverse polarity. And... Truth be told, where is he going to find the farm? It's already hard enough for how to find farm, let alone the rest of the team. Tongfu, despite only having lost their three tier ones, they are so much more constricted than that because they're up against the Nyx Assassin, they're up against a Blink Puck, and they're up against a great ganking lineup for LGD, plus Anti-Mage for Silar, always pushing the lanes, and so it's worse than it looks in terms of the tower score, and I'm not sure if, LGD, if Tongfu can actually resurrect this game, but... It comes down to those big team fights. They have a lineup that can just roll a team fight if they get the right initiation. It's very difficult, but if they can do it, they still have a shot. But getting it is going to be tough. Yeah, you talked about how they're going to get a little bit of uh, kind of extra gold. They're going to get it in terms of this uh, kind of tower trade. Tier one tower is very low, so they will bring it down quite easily. And even though you're trading a tier one for tier two, I think Tomfu won't mind it too, too much because they need every bit of extra gold and. They found it, especially with how last uh, last hitting that one. Yeah, LGD is going to look to break the base here. Blink Dagger was just picked up a move. This could Dyer's catch LGD by down. surprise. Also, attack. it's King J lurking on the high ground. This is Batrider. Right now, LGD feels a bit 
scattered and discombobulated in terms of their positioning, but they are going to wisely back off. Siler is going to go back to pushing, and this is where, if you're LGD, you buy a gem, because you have the massive tower gold advantage. You can afford a gem. Tang Fu can barely afford sentry wards right now. Look at Banana just sitting on two gauntlets of strength, a magic wand, and boots of speed. So getting a gem, such a great choice, I feel, especially when you have this kind of mobile ganking lineup. Haven't done it yet. Would like to see it soon, but in the meantime, it'll just be safe and steady farm. I feel this is where you go to, to Starvation Dota. You get your Anti-Mage his multiple next set of items, and a Spectre during that time maybe farms a Diffusal Blade, but while that's happening, you're gonna see a Manta style and probably a Vitality Booster on Silar. And then you go one item further, and I think that's where Silar can really control the game for his team. So if I'm LGD, I play this slow and safe. Well, although I agree with the gem being a really good item to have, but who's actually going to successfully carry this gem? Nobody actually will survive. If Tong Fu wants you dead, they will have you dead. A global and a blink lasso, that means a free gem for Tong Fu. So I completely agree to, with a safe and farm, but gem might be a little bit kind of ballsy. Yeah, I guess Yao has died this game. I was going to say Yao, duh, but he did get picked off for that last fight. Granted, I felt he overextended. Probably would play more carefully with the gem, but here comes Tong Fu. They're going to work on the tower. They want Siler to come to the fights and stop farming. They also just want some tower gold, because man, do they need it. Hao throws in a dagger, drives Radiant DDC back, works on the tower a bit. Now backs off. The familiars come in with stun on both of them. King J is going to drive everyone back, but look at what's happening bottom lane. There's a push right now. They'll get the tier one. Now they got to back and defend. Can they actually punish Siler? I don't think there's anyone in position to do it. And LGD are going to go right back in. It looks like DDC under cover and Vendetta. But he'll get caught by a blink last. So beautifully done. The global deployed as well. LGD on the run. DDC still alive, but they'll bring him down fast. Ooh. RP catches two. Skewer on back. Pile him in. And then look to clean him up. Vesa Epicenter is being channeled. Oh, God. This is bad for Tom Kui. Catches everyone. Monovoid as well. And here comes your cleanup crew. A hasted anti mate Silar was out for blood. He's out for kills. He's going to find Banana for sure. Mu may die as well on the other side of play. Banana, just no way he gets out. Even with this familiar, don't see it happening. No TP for him. Down he'll go. Now it's Mu on the run. Yao on the chase. The blink is there. The orb is there. Can Mu juke this? He's got to find an escape path. He hasn't found it yet. Skewer cools down. I think he's going to pull it off. Maybe. Maybe not. He's spotted at the shop now. He'll skewer into the trees. Yao gives chase. Can he bring him down fast? Where's that silence? Deploys it and snags the kill. When it's all said and done, that's Silar basically finishing his Manta style at 23 minutes. And again, soloed against the bat rider oh man it just it was such a beautifully kind of orchestrated team fight it just the sad thing is that there is a like a level eight level nine sanking that was tanky enough thank god to his double bracer build was able to survive long enough to drop off an epicenter combo because the two-man rp at the global was very very nice and skewer backwards they were supposed to kind of blow up the shrek and sanking walk back with their merry ways kind of up three or four kills Suddenly, Epicenter comes out, and everybody's half HP, and it's just a field day with Anti-Mage Blink, as well as Puck Blink. And that's, again, they have the correct mindset. They, they have Global, they have Magnus RP, and with the Blink, they should be able to win these team fights. Just the early game deficits uh, means another death on Hal, as well as everybody else on the team. I just really like the way that Tong Fu played that. I'm going to completely agree with you and say, sure, that looked great for LGD in the end, but I feel that's exactly what Tong Fu wants. It's just... They're too far behind in terms of items. If they, even if the same, at the same time though, you got to give Didi a lot of credit because he patiently waited for that epicenter. He didn't try and force it. He waits through the global. He comes in with Burrow Strike after there RP's down, after Lasso's already been used. There was just nothing left to cancel that. And credit him for great play. But if you're Tong Fu, that's the fight you want. I think that's a fight. If you have one more item, you take that fight and you do it convincingly. Even if Halsey has his Diffusal Blade complete, it probably goes a lot smoother. Still, Lumi, it's not looking too good for them right now. They're now down by 10k gold, 12k experience. And although Spectre can definitely take a hero like Anti-Mage late game in terms of just raw contributions to a, a direct team fight, he's not going to win in the split pushing war. He's not having, he doesn't have the items to take him in this game. And uh, Siler gets the Banta style. Now he looks towards the heart or the butterfly. I, I mean, maybe it's... I'm not sure what you go for this game. I'll let you talk about that, but whatever he goes for, he's going to have it. Uh, you mean Siler or yeah, Hal? Yeah, Siler, Siler most likely is going to go for the extreme standard, but looks like we're going to have a massive array of teleportation on the top lane. It's going to be on the run for the rest of the team. If somebody gets caught, let them get caught, or maybe they're going to stay the ground. They have global, and looks like they're going to initiate one more time. It is going to be global. They're going to focus on Xiao 8 this time. RP trying to get used. I'm not sure whether he casts a ton of... Well, they're going to get one more kill, but... Look at Silar, it's just doing a ton of deeps. 
in these middle team fight, but hey. At the same time, they only lose one, they get two. Yeah. They did blow the global, they blew a lot for that. The haunt as well, but they get the kills. Now they back off. Like you said, though, bad news is Silar is just farming away this whole time. He'll go mid, he'll continue farming there, but it's the potential for Tongfu with a well-timed global silence. This is where LGD need BKBs of their own. This is where you want your puck to have a BKB or even something like a Yule Scepter to purge off that silence. He's gonna need something to deal with it. I, I think it's key, especially for the puck, but ideally for some of these other heroes. Maybe Silar has even got to go for one. We'll see. He does have Silar is. style, but... Uh, we'll Silar is going to go for one, or he should. You can see how Shrek already has an Ogre Club and a mech. He is going to be going for one as well. BKB is the answer uh, against Global Silence, because you could BKB out of it. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if Silar makes the same choice. He could also try to tank up with a Heart of Tarask and be that frontline presence, because LGD is starting to feel like they lack that hero to jump in first. Tongfu's got it in spades between the Familiars, the Spectre Haunt, or well, just the Spectre Hero. They're going to smoke right now. And they I will find one now, because Yao has a 26-minute Scythe Vias blink. He hasn't skipped anything, hasn't rushed anything. Just off good place, and now they're going to be ganking with a Scythe. It's all up to the Global Silence. If they can get it off when it's up, then maybe RP comes out, but... I mean, now with the site, the vice for Yao, it gets a bit more tricky to find the opening. Let's see if they're going to catch out Sangchain. This is that first unveiling of a huge item. Like you mentioned, they're going to rotate towards mid for the time being. LGD currently leading by about 10k gold, so it's stabilized for Tangfu. They're down. I don't feel they're out just because of the strength of their composition. And something we talked about a lot in the last series is heroes that make it hard to break the base. Tangfu have a lot. RP, Global Silence, and Batrider, everything that Batrider has. These are a set of skills that you don't want to go and try to break this base lightly. You do it only when you're confident, when you have an Aegis, when you have those big items for Siler, which he doesn't have yet. So I wouldn't count Tangfu out, but they are definitely playing from behind, and it's definitely still going to be an uphill battle for them. I feel that Tongfu isn't really too afraid to take this into an ultra late game, and that might sound a little bit crazy against the anti-mage, but if you look at the late game implication of Tongfu, they're not that bad. I mean, global's always going to be nice, and is going to be granting half your team some some big deeps. Uh, How, of course, on Spectre, you know, one of the more premier late game heroes. And yeah, Batrider is always generally a great utility late game hero in terms of initiation. So, I feel that Tongfu, in terms of hero potential, they can go late. Uh, and, I mean, as long as you don't really lose any big Braxes or lose any big Roshan fights, they should be okay. Uh, 10k gold deficit is not a deficit that is unsurmountable. So, it's if Tongfu wants to go farm, they, that's an option. That's a very valid option. I think for them, it's, it's what we've seen so far, which is use your global, use your lasso, use your RPs to find a couple of smaller scale engagements, get a few kills. You and then go to, farm. Uh, yeah, and go farm off of that. Wait for them to cool down, control the map. And if you want to take it late, at some point, Silar's inventory starts to become a limited resource. And truth be told, uh, for a long time, Silar will be the strongest hero on the map. But if Spectre is able to equalize, Spectre also has Empower on his side. So his house going to be hitting a bit harder. And in a team fight, a Spectre with Haunt could do more overall damage than an anti-mage. Unless you yep. had a huge mana void. So I agree. I think Tongfu could take it late. It's going to be tough. They're going to smoke with four and they're going to run right behind Hal. It looks like hoping that LGD will go on to him. And if you're LGD... Well, there's four heroes off the map, and you see quite a bit, so... <laughs> in fact, wow, look at the map awareness from Shao 8. Hey guys, I guess they're all right in the exact area where they just were. Yeah, and uh, that's exactly where they were, so... Of course, Hal doesn't need to join these kind of smoke gank parties, Consider he has Haunt, he's always there. Uh, and in fact, they're using him to bait a little bit. Maybe Firefly check the Ancient Camp, because ex exactly that's what Siler is at. He's got his Force Staff now. This is a good item for Tongfu to find those pickoffs and then just back off. Moose lurking. It should, probably should be KJ who goes in first. The smoke will be dispelled. They're in the jungle now. They're going to start hitting creeps. Moo lurking. Oh. Firefly deployed. Siler trapped in the trees. Blink in. Lasso catches Xiao Wei. No BKB here. Remember, he's also got the mech. The global comes out. Moo is sight. Can't get off an RP. Where's the RP? I don't even think he got it off in the end. He ended up getting mono burn i believe and didn't get it off at the center channel by dd on the back lines how is low how on the run everybody kind of backing off here two heroes hit the deck for lgd and that's without the rp ddc mans up into the familiars into a whole lot of damage the flame rate pulls down ddc is gonna drop now silar potentially as well blinks away really forcing this fight king jay's out for blood Earn Ooh, here. silar oh, silar's low he may 160. die yeah he's gonna be fine he has a heart yeah i guess he picked up the heart in the middle of that team fight with a curry delivery but Again, look at Tong Fu. That was without, RP. That's without RP. Yeah, it was like 
Again, the utility of Tom Fu Hero is just so good. Let's not forget about Grave Chill lowering the attack speed for Anti Mage. That's a big deal for him. And of course, uh, you know, Silencer doing pure damage output. The Silence repeatedly. They were able to drive Puck away by using a Diffusal Blade Charge or two uh, from Spectre. That wasn't Tom Fu's true strength in terms of a team fight. But when you get a favorable jump, when you get off that global and a flaming lasso, which they have gotten off every single time, these team fights are not that hard. You talked about Anti Mage being the strongest hero. On, on LGD, but what do they have after that? A Lashrak? I mean, he's a fine semi carry, but I really don't well, think he go toe to toe with Spectre, Mag, you know. I, I fully agree. I just want to bring up one point, which is is for LGD China, it's not even the it's not the it's not the fight where the global and the RP is used. It's the fight after that. When those are down, that's the scary moment for Tang Fu. That's where they gotta sit back and that's where LGD is gonna do exactly what they're doing now, which is take the fight to Tang Fu, say you don't have global, you can't really deal with us right now. We're gonna force the issue, you're not gonna like it, we're gonna take a tier two off of this and I think it's the perfect way to play it. There is still RP, but they need the global to really take deal with LGD and it looks like they won't try to go now. They'll try and slow down the push, they won't be able to stop it, their tower will fall at LGD. The one thing I'll say is, I, I really would have liked to see that gem from them. I don't feel they have enough map control right now. Tongfu are able to farm their own jungle, they're able to set up smokes without being spotted too frequently. And I just don't feel, considering the start LGD had, I think their map control should have been better than it is. And I think not having a gem is a big reason why they're struggling in that regard. Yeah, I mean, they had a puck that was dominating all of the map. Maybe, again, they're respecting the lasso and global and, and a way to kind of kill the gem very quickly. But I completely agree with you. They, they were, I mean, again, they're le they were leading by 10,000 gold. It should have been somewhat of an easy victory. But you got to keep in mind that a ton of that gold is in Silar. So... The rest of the team comparatively isn't as farm as, or isn't that much more farmed than Tong Fu. So maybe that's another reason why the rest of the team isn't doing particularly as well. You know, you, know, you mentioned at Orth, I'm scared for Tong Fu or, or for LGD. When I look at Silar and I see he's got 19,000 net worth and they just lost the last team fight and almost yeah. lost him. That's scary. Imagine if Spectre has one more item. Imagine if it's only a 4 or 5k gold deficit, which it might be if they win another fight. Then it's very, very hard to see, uh, frankly, LGD winning a fight if Tongfu get an okay initiation off. And with Global and a Batrider, you should be able to get that initiation off. So, yeah, I mean, when you look at the net worth, it is it is concentrated in Silar. And how, how much does that gold really mean? It, it doesn't feel like a lot. And it's just hard to find the right fights when you're up against Batrider with a blink and a force. King J is making his presence felt. And they're going to smoke and head towards mid. Silar, oh boy, if he fights for this whole creep wave, he may die. Tong Fu, thinking about going in, maybe expecting heroes to be behind him and afraid to do it. Now they'll go bottom instead. Well, there is a pretty decent creep wave on bot. Uh, both these guys drawing a ton of arrows on the map, making sure they, they get some uh, nice gank let's, path going on. Let's go there that is, way. No, let's there, go this way. There is a gem on Nyx Assassin, so that's something worth pointing out. But team fight is breaking out right about now. Yao's gonna get the jump again. Global to follow through. They pick up one instantly. And that's it. That's gonna be all of your initiation. DDC's gonna come back around. There is... Oh. They're not done yet. They're gonna continue giving chase, I think, onto Xiaowei. Grape chill. Not actually being used. I felt they could have gone for more. They don't have lasso. They don't have global. Maybe worried about Radiant's buybacks here. They'll take it safe. They'll attack. work on the tower, Lumi, but they get the jump. They win the fight. The Puck yep. is the key team fight hero for LGD. And with no BKB, Radiant's with no Yule Scepter or Force attack. Staff or any sort of reliable defensive item, the Blink Lasso is there and you just die. A great play by Tang Fu. And for LGD, caught unawares again. I'm. I'm just judging how this game is going, as well as how the IG game went, I'm pretty sold that Silencer is kind of the next big thing. Uh, the way that these teams are playing it, in a, in a very sm slow, methodical, using that, that Silencer, whether it's for a single gank, like the way that uh, Invictus Gaming was using it, or just using it as a big teamfight mechanism, a little bit more traditional, standard way to use it. You pick off, I guess it's a little bit easier to prey upon LG because they have that one key hero, the one big X factor in terms of initiation power, and he doesn't have a BKB yet. But you just pick off Puck and suddenly LGD isn't LG. A, a ton of their kills, a ton of their items is in that Puck. And when you're silenced, when you're lasso, when you can't get off your coil and scythe, you know? He, he started of farm this, is not... I just want to point out, Yao started this game like 10-0 and 8. And Young got like, yeah. And now he's 11, 2, and 9. It's not that he's playing bad now, but he's really gotten quiet all of a sudden. And I think it's less that Yao's making mistakes and more so that Tang Fu could just punish him. And it's 
It's the global. They're using it very effectively. I mean, this is where support silencer is very scary. If you can use the global the right way and have the right fight. So many times when I've cast the support silencer, they waste global uh, yeah. needlessly when they're about to die. They blow it just to escape or to win a team fight that can't be won. Banana is using it to find a pick and then the fight snowballs that their way from there. So when you use it like this, this is a very fearsome support. I'm very impressed and to some extent, I'm happy to say I'm eating my words. Well, DDC's gonna try to de war a little bit with the gem, but here comes the entire team. I'm not sure whether that was. Uh, they will follow that black ink on the ground, but they, they will not chase him through. Again, uh, you know, Silencer is a good hero, but I think Tom is playing beautifully because they're utilizing the strength of their lineup, which is whenever the ults are down, go back, play defensive, farm. Um, you know, Bay or How, Bay How, for example, have the rest of the team backing him up. And whenever it's up, they're looking to play very, very aggressive. This team is also very good at chasing with a Blink Dagger and Bat, with a Blink Mag, with, you know, a Grave Chill, uh, as well as a couple of Purge Charge being used. So once you get that one single target pickoff, you could snowball, like you said, and pick off more and more targets. So it's okay for them to use Global for a single solo kill because it almost guarantees you. Guarantees you another kill or two, and that's that's exactly how these team fights are going. So it was a ten thousand goal lead earlier. It's still around ten thousand goal lead now, but do you kind of feel that LG is not really having as firm of a grip yeah. as they were game, before? Game seems to be slipping away from them as the Godfather of Chinese Dota, Hipovic, manages to pause and resume the game immediately, which I thought was pretty funny. And not a not a peep was spoken, but. It does feel like the game's slipping away from them, and it ain't gonna help that there's now a pipe up on Sanction. You look at LGD, you really examine their lineup. It's all magical damage, and then it's anti-mage, and a lot of his damage is magic with the mana burn. So this is a huge item, and on a support Visage, I actually am shocked that he's managed to farm it. Visage is not a great farmer by any means, but just through not dying this game and finding a lot of kills and assists, Sangchain has quietly farmed some, it's 10, 5, huge, 7. Yeah, some huge items yeah. despite not having much CS. I'm getting very worried for LGD. If they lose another big fight, Hal's going to have his next item, and that's the point where Spectre uses his ult and two or three heroes just flat out die during the ultimate. So Lesh is going to find his BKB, which is going to be a big part in terms of any type of counter offense. If he gets off a BKB after a, a global was used and could get off a 2 or 3 man uh, spurf, that's exactly what his need to, team to needs to disrupt this kind of uh, oppressive initiation. But with that said, if you look at Mu, he's really close to his own BKB, and that's kind of like the one up to your BKB. So it's going to be still tough. They gotta need to find a pick or two, and that's exactly what they need to do. Or that's what they're doing right now. And here they need to get the jump on, and let's see if they can find one. Oh, they're gonna run right into Tanfu. Tanfu with a gem, but it's on Banana, who wasn't quite envisioned. It looks like that's a beautiful three hero fail. Talk about a start to a team fight. Go in the way of LGD. Buybacks will fly out from Tanfu. Moves the first one to buyback. Sanction caught in position, trapped out. Will be dropping real quick. The double buyback RPs here, and only catches Silar. Where's the follow up right now? There's none in sight. How's gonna try and man up on him? Him. Can they bring him down? They will with the lasso. They've used a lot of buybacks. They gotta kill him. Can they? Can they finish the job? They will. Now DD's on the run. There's two heroes dead right now for LGD. Two died for Tanku and bought back, and one is currently dead. DD on the run as well. When it's all said and done, he's going to drop. I believe he's barely even taking damage from these familiars, shockingly. But I think at the end, the familiars will bring him down. Meanwhile, it looks like Banana's picked up an additional kill. Still, DD chugs on Hopop. Yet another urn charge. That's canceled quickly. Man, these familiars just suck at doing damage right now. Oh my goodness, they're fully run out of those initial charges. Barely even scratchy him. Diddy's gonna live, it looks Are like they it. really still chasing him? They're not gonna get that kill. What the hell his are these passive, first thing? His passive regen is greater than what the damage they're doing. Oh my god. Oh. Alright, they finally... They got, the, they got the memo that they weren't gonna get the kill, so they back off. You know, you were talking about, you know, the Silar was big fat, and, and they lose a team fight, and they get scared. I think this is really the truly scary moment as Banana's off to... Um, uh, this is not what you do. This is not what you do, Banana, even if you win a team fight. Oh, but if you get a King J backup, maybe this is exactly what you do. DDC pops off some spikes, but those birds are here, and this time they'll be stunned instead of hitting for 10. Beautiful. So they do get the kill. Nicely done. And this is but, real bad for LGD. They're giving up a real Yeah. Game. Sure, Tongfu uses two buybacks. That's completely fine. Hao is getting fat as all hell. He's got a Mansa style up now. He was not forced to buy back. He's all of a sudden 4, 5, and 20. And that's the one thing that's always scary about Spectre. 
This hero can rack up assists better than any other carry in the game, which means extra gold for him, which means potentially extra levels if he's actually there in the fights with this hero. It's scary to deal with Lumi. And now, with an Aegis to his name, he can die once he has buyback. Buyback, haunt in, and suddenly have a huge impact in the fight twice. Not to mention, by the way, he's really hard to kill when you factor a dispersion. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be as kind of insane if you don't have the Radiance, which to add kind of... Uh, residual damage throughout the fight, but still, I mean, he's going to stick on your support like white on rice, and it's going to be really, really annoying for them to deal with, and there's a ton of damage output within power, so still a very big threatening force in this game. Uh, I gotta say, though, uh, kind of scary moment is that you got the jump, you got the favorable initiation, you got your puck, he was able to use everything for once, and you still lose your team fight. granted, thanks to your really good buyback from Tong Fu, but more credit to Tong Fu, you know, they're ahead, or well, sort of, they're quote-unquote air, air core ahead and previous to that team fight. They were still saving buyback, still playing safe. They were close enough for the buyback to actually pay off. And again, the team fights are now going to Tong Fu. Go check. Still 10,000, but I think Tong Fu is more and more ahead. This, this got to be one of the closest 10,000 lead game ever, I want to say. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're more and more ahead, but LGD is definitely less and less ahead right now. Yeah, and yeah. soon, Tung Fu will be ahead. And also, keep in mind, every item that Hal gets it actually means a lot more because he has Empower on his side, and that can make a big difference, especially for a phase drums Manta Spectre. This, as well as having a Diffusal Blade, Hal can auto-attack constantly all fight long. Something... Sometimes Spectre struggles Radiance with, depending on the build you go for. He's got decent chase with just Phase as well as Dagger, but when you throw in a Yasha as well as a Diffusal Blade and a Drums, you're constantly auto-attacking. Nobody is running from you. Even Anti-Mage can't reliably run from that amount of slow and that amount of chasing power. So, I think Tong Fu's in good shape. They haven't won this game yet, but they have now really the, the comfort to sit back and farm, go towards the Heart of Terrasse for how, or get the buyback online. And then they can just pick and choose when they take their fights. And if you're LGD Lumi, how in God's name are you going to break the base now? With the buybacks cooling down, with the Batrider always to worry about with Blink Force, with RP as a concern, with the global there to really screw them over, and with only one BKB to deal with that global, I just don't think LGD have the correct items or the advantage they need to go high ground. And if they don't go high ground now, can they do it later? That's the question. And I'm not sure they can. I mean, normally I would say here, if if right now that the way that the game is not working out for you, you go for a late game yourself, LGD. You have an anti-mage that still has some slots to be left to be filled. He has uh, one slot left. Uh, I guess you could swap out that treads for a uh, for a Bridge of Travel as well. Your Lashrak could get pretty big if he gets Scythe up. Your Pug could still get a BKB and be effective. Heck, even your Sanking could get a BKB. But it, it's very easy for Tongfu to break high ground. If they want to initiate, they can. And they, that, that seems like exactly what they want to do right now. Slowly siege down tier 2 and start looking for high ground. Or no, maybe they're going to wait out for buybacks. Uh, make sure that the, that those are ready. And then they're going to do it. Um, I, I guess time... Uh, LGD could actually go late uh, themselves. So they could pick up a couple of Scythe. They have four very valid Scythe carrier. As long as they have gold. And so far they're not getting it. I'm actually starting to say that maybe Sarla shouldn't really farm as much as farming. You give goes to the ally, this might sound like completely crazy, but... Maybe in 10-15 minutes. He needs buyback, you want to complete your inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if it goes another 10-15, then yeah, I'd start to agree with you. Silar should farm for buyback and give the farm to his teammates. But we're not quite there yet, and as far as getting more than one Scythe device, that's still a long way off. Shall we? Has an ultimate orb, but needs to save for buyback as well. Sandcade's not farming one. Not not this game. Not unless it goes for 70, 70, 80 minutes. DDC isn't farming one either. In theory, they have four heroes they can build a site device. In practice, I'd say maybe one of them will actually have the gold to build it. So, I still feel it's Tom Fu in the comfort zone right now. They yeah. can sit back. I think the pressure is really on LGD. And what's my biggest problem for LGD, that I feel their only real damage dealer is that anti mage. Sure, you've got a lot of magic damage, but there's a pipe and a mech on Tong Fu. They're also getting the jump every fight. There's a BKB on Magnus. Uh, Spectre's got two lives and soon a heart. In fact, now a heart. So basically, doesn't care about the magic damage. And trying to kill the Spectre, it, this is where you try to kill Spectre, you just lose all your supports doing it. With no BKBs, they're going to take so much extra damage from Dispersion. Tong Fu smoked up, looking for a kill. Not going to find one yet, but I, I like the way they're playing this. Just using their smokes very discreetly and only when they feel they have what they need to take the fight. So right now, I think they have exactly what they need. I mean, this is where Silar could kind of single-handedly take over the game in terms of split push. He's going to TP back to base, but he's applying a ton of pressure by pushing the Creeper Librium across on m multiple lanes. And I got to ask your opinion on this build. Now, obviously... Uh, 
we didn't know the game was going to go somewhat of a, well, well, we'll talk about that later, as both teams getting somewhat close to each other. Uh -oh. DDC is going to be scouted up by the Familiars. Actually, it's Sangshane, the first one to fall, and under cover of Vendetta, he'll try to start the fight, but out comes the pipe, and I have no idea what's going on with no sound effects. RP catches a few, not looking good for LGD. They lose their Saiyan kid off the bat. They're about to lose Xiao Wei. They're just all melting. It's all up to Siler. Can he win this man fight all by himself? All by his lonesome. He brings down a few. Now he's got to deal with how Remember, how got the Aegis. How? He's dropping low. Silar is too. He'll kill off the puck simply with a few auto attacks. Triple kill for how while he's busy dying. He'll come back now. Is he going to try and chase Silar? It looks like he might. Dagger comes in. The chase goes on. The dagger will follow you. Purges here. Might be enough. Silar's going to try and blink away. They need one more hero to bring him down, and they can't get anyone else in range. He will live. They do get rid of the Aegis. A decent fight for LGD, but they lose three to do it. How doesn't die, and now how is up they to another four. 2k goal. Lashrek, Lashrek died as well, and he bought back. Oh, so, excuse me, four. Ooh, the courier, the courier takes the gem, and that's on some next level path, trying to make it back to the base right now. Uh, or is that, or is that his, I guess that's why uh... Run, Smeevil, run. It's actually gonna head all the way towards the bottom lane, and it will look to make a, oh, 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 oh. Break wave. that's not good. Smeevil dropping low, Smeevil dropping real low. It will make it out. A deep, a deep sea diving mission of sorts, and they get the gem back. It's a small victory for LGD, but it's a sea of big problems for them losing that fight. So uh, the point that I was trying to, the question I was wanting to ask you before that team fight broke out is, obviously, heart butterfly kind of the best way to spend your goal if you're gonna go late game anti mage. But uh, kind of back to the time where you asked me, all right, anti mage has this mantisau, he has his battle fairy, he's been farming well, and that's the time of the game where they were actually sort of still winning, right? Uh, they were holding to the 10,000 goal lead, they were doing fine, the, the team fights hasn't really started. At that point, would it have been better just to straight up went BKB into Basher? Because I felt like that, that item set will allow you to survive the team fight, do a ton more, be a lot more useful in a team fight other than a big punching bag with that heart, and, and pick off a couple of heroes and, and kind of take the fight to Tongfu. Or do you kind of still feel that this was the best, best possible item set? Uh, the heart into butterfly. I mean, maybe. I guess I could see the BKB being more effective, but there's so many ways to deal with it. I mean, you look at Lasso, you have your RP, and sure, he's not taking a lot of damage, but he's also not doing anything for a very long time. Not to mention, if you Manta and then get global, you're just going to be sitting there silent. So, uh, especially if you've already used your BKB. Well, you could BKB out of the right. silence. It, it depends on when he pops the BKB. This is huge right now. There is a double damage on Silar. There's illusions on the Silar, which he needs to micro them and push them away. If they can find a pick and win a oh, team no. fight right, right now, now. This could be it. How's going to get caught out mid. They'll start off with a sight. Now the Abyssal comes in, but the RP catches three. Oh my goodness. That's not a good way to start this fight. If you're LGD, Yao's on the run. Dropping past Silar, trying to man up, but Lasso unable to do a whole lot. Now on the run, Tang Fu are going to give chase, shall we? It will fall. Yao will buy back. But what can he do? Silo wants to go back in. He's still got the DD. He's got a Manta. He's got his Abyssal Blade ready to go. Never even popped it. He can't fight. This is just one of those games where anti mage can be fat as all. Well. Maybe. Never mind. I'll jump in now. He'll buy now. What an initiation. The buyback from Yao. Turning it around. Beautiful timing and patience from LGD. Wow. That buyback really turning the tides of this fight. Still, they have to die here. Yao can't die here, he doesn't have buyback, he just used it, he's gonna be silenced, he gets picked off a second time. There is a Spectre coming away, knocking on your Rax's doors, and there is Anti-Mage, farm as hell. He's got 3k, is that buyback go? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it is buyback go. This okay. is where you may have to throw your life away just to defend the base. And, and if you win a big fight somehow, how doesn't have buyback? So maybe Radiance then you can turn the tides, but... There's so much locked on a time, but it's gonna be very hard for Siler to deal well, with. Well, there is fight. no RP. There is no la Oh, there is a lasso. There's actually not much Radiance lockdown Radiance aside from Radiance familiars. Radiance. If you want to count those in, so if he it kind of comes in from a perfect angle, in fact, they don't they don't want to push. Tom Fu doesn't want to push, despite Puck and Lashrak being dead for the moment. It looks like Silar is gonna push out. I don't I don't think this game is clear cut as clear cut as as I, I kind of looked at it ten minutes ago. I, I think LGD could still win this, to be completely honest. Late game Dota is never clear cut. I mean, yeah. it's whoever, gets, whoever gets the jump on the enemy team is always going to have a shot, unless they're way too far behind. And you look at the gold graph, 10k gold means very little right now, and it's basically dead even in terms of experience. Siler's going to push straight down mid. He's got buyback, wants to force the issue against Tang Fu, at least get the lanes pushed in. Roshan is about to respawn. And if he gets Aegis and his buyback, then maybe, just maybe, could turn the game around. Although, truth be told, he doesn't have room for it. And this is probably where you want Yao to get the Aegis, because he just died. He bought back. 
If he dies again, that could potentially cost LGD the game. We now enter the 50 minute mark. It's the Dota 2 Super League, the perfect world. 1 million RMB coming out party for Chinese Dota. Approximately 160,000 US dollars in prize pool. The biggest event outside of the International 2013, which, oh, by the way, just recently clipped $2 million. So shout out to all you guys who bought compendiums. I did too. How looking for Silar here? Well, not looking for him, but he will oh, find him. Hello. He's got buyback, but you don't want to be throwing that away foolishly. And now the elaborate dance that is the Roshan engagement begins. Yeah, he's he's got to be very happy that there isn't any kind of Cypher Vice or any instant initiation. So it's very easy for him to actually, if he sees Bat coming to blink in and initiate on him, he just activates Basis, Abyssal and kill him right back. So that's why you don't see Bat Rider looking for as aggressive of a jump as he has been. Silar pinging his team right now. Like, they're actually getting to Creek Believer closer and closer to Tom Fu side. This is actually kind of a, a scary moment for Tom Fu. You've been in the game. You're, 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 your foot is in the doorway. You, you've been trying to win this game for the last 20 minutes. It's so easy for them, for, for oh, Radiant no. to find a pick and win the game straight right this now. This could be the initiation for LGD with Tom Fu posturing down the ramp right now. They'll sit back up on top of it. If they sat down there for a few more seconds, I think LGD might have looked to go, but they're not going to dive when there's multiple counter initiators lurking on the high ground. So in the end, well, we're back to farming for the time being, Lumi, and the familiars are scouting Roche, so LGD is not going to pull a fast one here on Tang Fu. Well, Anti Mage right now has enough for buyback and a butcher travel after uh, death and, and buyback. Another double damage oh my is god! It's the god strat. Just wait for the late game double damage on your hard carry, and then hey, you, then you go in. I remember there's a pub game I played with Gods like a year ago. That was a Gods strat that we went for. Uh, we waited for 20 minutes before a double damage and actually came up. And we still won the team fight for revive without Gods. Uh, <laughs> he was playing tiny. But hopefully the game will be a little bit different here today. Yeah, well, the, the strat is supposed to be that you use the double Radiant's damage to win the game for your attack. team. But hey, winning, the game, farm faster. winning the game while, while you, your team winning the game while you're busy farming is A-OK -okay as well. Silar, yeah. like you said, I, He's, he's got the boots to travel buyback. There's nothing else for him to farm at this point. I don't really think there's an item you want to replace here. This is pretty much your ideal kit because Spectre is hitting very hard. You want the butterfly. There's a lot of magic damage. You want the heart. You want the lockdown of the Abyssal. I don't really see a change. I mean, maybe he could switch to an MKB once the part of, uh, or rather the butterfly is complete on now, but Antimid is pretty much done farming. So now, yeah, you do want to give your farm uh, to the team. Aside from just keeping the lanes pushed out, Tom Fu trying to sneak a Roche. Can they do it? DDC is going to lead the charge. There is a gem on Banana. They'll all back out. Roche is low. Silar might be able to snipe this one. Mu lurking on the high ground. Patience from Tong Fu for the time being. And now LGD says, we're going to push mid back in. We're going to force you to go to Fen. And as soon as you do, we're taking your Roche. Patience from Navi waiting in the wake. No, no, no waiting they, in the wings. Just patience right now. That was that was so good. Can I say that was so good? I, I'm not I'm not supposed to say it, but it was, that was pretty good. Hey that man, was it was good. all right. Silar's on the yeah. run. Dagger's gonna slow him down. Silar uh, thinking about going back in, working on the illusions here. Split Earth brings them down. I'm trying to get excited, man, but Tung Fu is just playing this so slow, so patient, and so too is LGD. But you know, this is already the calm before the storm. Yeah, this uh, again, kind of a big posturing back and forth. There's a wild observer war on the ground that needs to get rewarded by LG. Do they not have gem? That's gotta be a mistake, right? No, they do. It's... DDC's got one, Banana's got one. Both teams have a gem. King J's looking to go in. Where's that blink? No. Nope. Silar's not the one you want to jump on. I feel not when he's got boots to travel by back, uh, as well as being a six slotted anti mage. And, and they understand gets... that as well. Yeah, Silar's just standing so next to the enemy team. So yeah, come on, go me, bro. on me. Go on, yeah. me, bro. <laughs> Well, speaking of which, Hal doesn't have my back. Silar jumps in. He's going to force the fight. Oh, Banana with the Ghost Scepter. Turns it around, keeps him alive. Now Silar forced to blink away. The global was thrown out, but right after that blink. So Silar's going to hoof it out of there. Shall we? Two. RP catches two. This could be good. Sure, Silar's got the boots of travel buyback. If you kill the supports, what will be left? They find two. Silar's going to fall as well. Hal hunts him down. Now he buys back. And Tang Fu says, we got what we came for. Get DDC and probably get out after that. Or maybe not. Maybe they could just win the game here with two heroes dead, take the Roche, and not even care. Question the decision making of Silar here. I guess if you jump on a uh, Silencer and kill him kind of flat out like that, then there is no global, and the team fight gets completely one sided for LGD, but it didn't happen like that. In fact, Silar. Is KJ lagging? What a time for a pause. I imagine there must be lag. You would know better than me, but. 
Uh, yeah, I think that's what both teams is suspecting right now. <laughs> well, we'll wait through the pause, but oh my goodness, King J scythed up right now is dead to rights with Silar right here. It looks like, unless the familiar stun could turn this around. So actually, maybe it could. Mu doesn't have RP. I'm a little surprised Tang Fu tried to go in with the buyback. Yeah, I, I was surprised myself. Let's see what happens, though. This is going to be an interesting fight to unravel. We won't have more time to talk about it. The unpause comes right now. Watch the familiar. See if it can stun everyone. I imagine Siler will look to run away. The unpause not happening just yet. A little bit of chit-chat for both teams. Just waiting for the unpause. Any second now. It's game one of this best of three. LGD China. Well... It's only game one, God. There's two more games like this This, this, this feels here. like an 80-minute game. It's just yeah, been such a chess game for both teams. Very tactical... Very patient. The unpause being counted down now by Sosa, our G GameFi admin. Here we go. 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 Here we go. Three, two, one. Unpause. King J caught and is going to drop in a matter of seconds. Seller able to bring one down. Now he's got to fight his way through How and DDC. He brings down one. He's winning the man fight so far. How's probably got a back. No, maybe not. Not with the amount of damage he gets from Empower. Now Yao dropping quick. Falling fast, Silar 2, forced to run, Who blinks in, can't quite find that puck in time, he will get away. It's now a 2 on 4, Roche is at half HP, and if you're Silar, uh, he's gonna jump in, he won Sanction, I don't know if he can do it, yes he can, with that Monovoid, but now Silar lassoed up, if he goes down here, they are probably losing the game, he's gonna blink away, he's barely alive, the chase is here from KJ, 2 or 3 more hits enough to bring him down. No buyback! No buyback, and this might be it, Lumi. 95 seconds on the sideline for our anti-mage. Tang Fu, do they go Roche, do they go mid? Oh, they go they for the win right now. Yeah, and it's gonna be up to LG to defend this. There is no lasso. RP's back up. Unfortunately, Magnus don't have mana. Uh, Han is gonna be back up. Uh, mana is also becoming an issue here for the Spectre, but it doesn't matter. You don't need mana to right-click this base, and that's exactly what Hao and his rest of the team will be doing. He's gonna work away on the tower here. The tier three starting to drop pretty fast. Burrow strike just to slow him down. But remember, all these heroes on LGD, they lose so much health trying to kill Hao. And with a butterfly as well as a heart, he can tank the tower shots all day long. The tower's dropping. Global silence is pulling down. RP's online, just needs the mana. He will have it. He's pretty low though, Moo is maybe a backstab here can turn this around. They're gonna lose Rax. Will they lose more? Still 50 seconds and counting. Silar on the sidelines, unable to do anything. But watch while his base starts to evaporate around him. Now we'll back off Tang Fu, taking it late, Lumi, and just having those better engagements. It looks like they're going to get Roche, and if they get Roche, and they have a lane of Rax, and they have a Spectre, who still has buyback, it's very hard for LGD to take this game. Still, it's not impossible, because that one lane of Rax doesn't really mean anything. The Aegis is a bigger problem, though. Uh, the buyback available, that's another huge problem. So, let's see if LGD is going to... I don't, I don't want to say this, but they're going to try to turn over six more minutes. They're going to avoid fights, uh, unless unless Tom Fu just straight up and take it to their face. Um, this is also where you want to say, hey, Didi, take up your points on Cossack Finale. You're going to be the carry now. You're going to be taking a ton of farm. You're going to be pushing out these wave. Maybe get a Blink Dagger. It's the latest Blink Dagger ever, but it helps split push. Maybe go for a Scythe. Maybe go for BKB. There's a ton of room left for growth. For these other heroes that hasn't been receiving a ton of farm. And I think Silar needs to kind of chill it. Uh, apply those bricks on those farming gears. Because yeah, the rest of the team needs it. You're right in a sense. Because obviously the rest of the team will benefit more from the farm. But who else is going to keep the lanes pushed out really fast? It's only Silar who can reliably and instantly mow down a creep wave. Sand King can do it. But it's not as fast. It's not going to really keep the... Like you're fighting against the tide of the creep waves basically. And Silar... Well, he's the best one at kind of pushing that tide back. So, he'll continue to farm, and I can't really fault him for doing it, even if it does mean that his team gets a little bit less. And now LGD, if they want to wait out that Aegis, they've got about four and a half minutes or so. Sorry, five minutes to go. Any any kind of thoughts on maybe having a Divine Rapier waiting in the base, and during that critical defense, swap out your Battle Fury for a Divine. I mean, you still want the Battle Fury for now, and looks like sold the, M uh, the Battle Fury for MKB. And the reason I've been saying that you want Battle Fury is because, like LD's kind of talked about, how, how good it is in terms of pushing out the, uh, the Creep Equilibrium, you know, uh, dealing with the tide yeah. of creeps that's coming in, but 
MKB against uh, Evasion, I guess. Uh, he just doesn't have room for a Divine Rapier. The Butterfly is essential against Spectre with this number of items. The, the Abyssal Blade is needed to blow someone up at the start of the fight because that's how LGD wins a fight is if Silar can find a pick off quickly. If it's sort of a, a more orderly fight, I, I feel Tongfu are going to take it. So he needs the Abyssal. Obviously, he needs Mance Style because he's freaking anti-mage. <laughs> well, Heart's pretty important too to not die real fast, so... I just don't know what Silar could replace, even if he wanted to go Divine. You need MKB to deal with the Spectres of Asian. And I think I pretty much covered every other item, so... I just don't think there's any other options, Lumi. I think he's just... He's got Treads! He's gotta sit on what he has. Uh, yeah, you need the Treads. You need the mobility. Maybe you can get Boots of Travel. You need Boots. This is not a Siege Engine kind of anti You got game. Blink, man! That That is the best kind of Boots. That's not Boots. That's... <laughs> Indeed, it is not Boots. Are we gonna see a... Okay. Uh, it's gonna be four sap coming on Nyx's ass, and I first second I thought was a Dagon, which is probably not a good choice when you're going 58 minutes in. But here we go, LGD trying to hold on to the base. Al's gonna be leading. He's gonna eat a ton of stuns in the front line. Ah, uh, flame lasso initiation. It's gonna be on Shao. Hey, once again, where's the global? It's gonna be coming out just in time. But they're gonna try to burst out Mudo RP. Gonna be just on use of Silo. Second RP comes against the Silo as well. He's down to half HP. He's actually gonna take everything. They need Vlads or something for this guy to get lifesteal. He's going to try to fight his way out of there. I'm not sure whether he has buyback or not just yet. Silo, regardless, will survive. How on the front lines here? He still has Aegis. He's so damn tanky. Nobody's actually bringing him down. And I think they have did it. They kind of broke the high ground. Everybody's low. They have to heal back up. And how he's healing with the heart in the front line with the butterfly and just oh working on that tier goodness. 3. He might drop here, but remember, he's got Aegis. And then he's got Boots to travel buyback on top of it all. DDC dropping low. Not dead just yet. Here we go, How round two, fight. Will he man up? Will he run away? Hard to say. Yao jumps in, can't quite find a kill. Now we'll have to see if he can get out of there. How though, yeah. is being focused under the shadow of the enemy tier three. He will go down, but Banana lives. And here comes your buyback. Here comes your haunt. Here comes a Spectre party. Once that anti-mate, Silar blinks away, runs back in. I'm not sure if this is the call that you want to make. He does a buyback though. So maybe it is triple for Silar and he gets out of there. But while he's busy healing, the racks are dying. Almost one of those situations where you can't afford to go heal it's better to die and then just get the instant respawn he does the buyback still not using it they get two lanes of rex and now lgd well lumi it's like the sand in the hourglass just slowly trickling away i feel they're running out of options and opportunities here tong fu 7k on how he just bought back this is time for a big item he'll go for a demon edge when he gets his mkb how or silar rather is not going to be nearly as tanky as he was in the past few fights yeah, MKB real turned uh, these how how these man fights have been going. I mean, Silo was actually able to blow away two and a half life from that Spectre. The Age of used, and then the second life, and then the buyback Han came in. And to be honest, if Silo was high enough HP to one v one man fight, would have brought her down a third time. And, and that's where you kind of kind of be like, is anti mage really supposed to be this strong? To me, the fact that LGD doesn't have one or even multiple Vlads to make sure you still have the Vlads aura. Uh, when that person die is a traversy. Let's track it does have the balance, but he gets focused in the beginning of team fight every time anyway, so you might as well don't have it. Maybe instead of a four staff on Nyx Assassin, Vlads is just a better item purchase because your anti mage needs to be man fighting 24 7. Nobody's tanky on this team, let's be honest. It doesn't matter who carries the Vlads. Four Vlads, I don't care. Make sure Silo can fight. Uh, come on, Lumi. <laughs> You're, you're really stretching here, buddy, I gotta say. Well, I, I, it's true, though. Silar does need the lifesteal badly, but I don't think buying more Vlads is really the solution. I think, if anything, this is a team that just needs more things like Ghost Scepters, Force Staves, and BKBs, to be honest, for LGD. Maybe even a Sight Device. A, even something like a Yule Scepter for some of these heroes could be helpful. Getting items like Vanguard, well, I mean, at this point, doesn't do much for you, DDC. Does have a four staff, so I think those are the items you really want, just to kind of live through that initial barrage of RP, Lasso, and Global as long as humanly possible. But at the end of the day, LGD, it's really starting to feel desperate for them. They've got to make something happen before the next Roche. If they don't, they just lose, because with Aegis and then Cheese going on Tongfu, there's going to be no way for LGD to take a fight. Tongfu still sitting on three lanes of ranks in game one. It's turning into a real grind fest. Both teams duking it out to the bitter end. And it's looking good for Tongfu, but they haven't finished the deal yet. It's a 40k nearly net worth anti-mage right now for Silo. That is about as fat as you can get. He's richer than God and all the angels put together. But money doesn't win, win right games. Here. Killing the throne does. 
they're going for the win right now. They, they're giving away a range racks for free. They're saying, you know what, we cannot drag this game than it actually is. We're gonna just go for it here, uh -oh. Silar. Does have buyback and boots travel still. But the last one's gonna start him, shall we? He gets hold in position. That flats will go down soon. RP1, RP2. Moo is delivering like a champ. DDC to fall as well, and this looks to be the end for LGD. There's a buyback from Silar. He'll try and stem the tides, but he can't save his buddy. The puck will fall as well. And as farmed as this six slotted anti mage may be, Silar is not going to out carry the full five man lineup of Tang Fu. And LGD, like you said, it was a gambit. They had to take that kind of a risk, but Mu was there with a double RP, and he wins them the fight, and he wins them the game. He gave up two kills early, Lumi. He lost his lane hard, but he delivered when it really counted. Tang Fu on the back of that Magnus play, and overall, just great team play, I feel, more than anything else, are going to take game one in this best of three. And look at that go graph. It's just kind of going all the way down. What a swing, what a swing. Uh, again, Truly. never count out Tom Fu. Yeah, like, kind of halfway through, like 30 minutes in, you kind of look at the teams like, yeah, this guys, these guys can go late. And that's exactly what happened. They play perfectly. The RPs, I have to kind of give credit to Boo. Like you said, gave away first blood, but those RP are so good at the end. And the refresher kind of took it to the next level. It's that age old channel in Chinese Dota. It's all about breaking the base. And Tang Fu had so many good heroes to stop that between using global offensively to prevent LGD from grouping up, finding pickoffs, Batrider with Blink, Lasso, and Force Staff, RP from Magnus, and of course the Spectre Haunt. All these abilities can just disrupt your combo, disrupt your push. LGD could never get comfortable and park themselves for a siege the way we've seen a lot of other teams be able to do uh, and to execute in previous games. So as a result, Tang Fu, book it. They take game one. They're now leading one to zero in the best of three set. It's not over yet, though. LGD, they've got the international three East qualifiers coming up, Lumi, in just about 36 hours or so. So they can't be resting easy, but they got to find a way to pull this one out. Else, they'll drop to one and two in the group for the Dota 2 Super League. I'm LD. He's Luminous. It was a whopper of a game one, but we're not done yet. Stay tuned. Game two, next.